What were you doing before you decided to be a group? Um, well, Sharon and me had decided to be journalists. We were at the London College of Fashion and uh, Karen was at the BBC in an office. <laughs> Having a great time. <laughs> were you? I mean, did you hate it? We were dying to escape from did what you, you were do doing from day to day. Did you experience on the same paper as you? Sounds. Yeah, you know, um, well, we had to do a week yeah, experience <laughs> with the college and I went to Sounds for a week and worked with um, Gary Bushell. <laughs> it was a oh, great experience. I'm sure it was. It's the only week's work she's done in her life. And then, you, and then you, as a result of that, you decided not to be yeah. a journalist <laughs> and be in a pop group instead. Yes. How old were you when, when Banana Armour started? As in our um, teens, it's like, it's, you know, we, well, you never worked at all, did you, no. after college? And I had to pack in my job because I'd taken so much time off that I just couldn't, you know, I had no no holidays left and I couldn't possibly take any more sick leave. So it was a case <laughs> of, you know, leave or work for the next six months solidly. So I left and told my mum I was going to be a pop star. <laughs> well, she which impressed. she had a breakdown. <laughs> Have you ever lied about your age? Did people ever, like, I mean, did because girls are always under pressure to do that kind yeah. of thing in pop, aren't they? Like, they want you to be kind of 18 forever. Yeah, we do, especially abroad. You just well, you find out that everybody them. else lies about it, and there's people that's been, been in the business longer than you, and they end up being so younger than 21 you. 21 so, yeah. or something. But I think it's quite funny anyway to, to, to get, well, I, I always used to give a different age every time I was interviewed, because I just thought it was funny. How wide variety are we talking about? It's bad on me horribly <laughs> because there's a girl who worked for Smash Hits who decided that I was lying about my age and added several years onto it and it's gone into the Smash Hits file and Smash Hits has now opened in Australia and America and it's in those files there. I think you'll probably so I get these cards this year, won't you? Happy 29th birthday <laughs> or my last birthday and I'm <laughs> aging. Right, we're going to move on chronologically to the next video which was one that Midyear directed. I yeah, think, I was really much. saying something. Yeah, he looked very yeah. attractive in his jodhpurs, didn't he? Yes. <laughs> he wore the whole director's kit. Oh, no. It's oh. a very confident performance from me, I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we weren't particularly Vintage. professional in those days. We hadn't really learnt how to <laughs> sort of master the art of actually performing to anything, mm. let alone a camera. The only thing we could do was sort of snigger at each other, really. Mm. Oh, but it's such a great video because it looks so kind of... It's loose just, and yeah, not sort of fussy. Innocent and... charm about it. Shorts. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was trying to say. Innocent charm. <laughs> How has being pop stars changed other people's reactions towards you? Um, I mean, it depends what sort of people you're talking about. I mean, as far as friends go, we still sort of mix with the same people as we have all the way along. So they don't really change at all. I mean, they're still, it treats exactly the same. It's, it's very strange when people sort of start asking you for autographs and things. You feel a bit stupid sometimes when you actually think, you know, that people are coming up and asking you to write your name, like, love Karen, on a piece of paper. I sort of think it seems really mad, because I don't think of myself as being some sort of superior hero of anyone's. But Did it affect, like, when you met boys and things? I mean, at 18 or whatever, you're in a group and you meet boys mm. and to them you're somebody famous. Yeah, well, it does, definitely. I think that we go to the sort of places where, I don't know, um, either, well, I'm lucky because I'm rarely recognised anyway. <laughs> but, um, so I, I suppose it, it's not as bad for me. But um, if you, the sort of clubs we go to, well, there's loads of people in groups go to them and, and people are used to seeing them, so it's no big deal, you know. Occasionally you yeah, might get a wally come you up. You do too, get some some boys like and they they like sit with their mates and they look at you and point you at, and then they'll come up and talk to you, but they'll pretend they don't know who you are, which is really sickening. Oh, yeah. As if they just fancy you, you know. But really it's just like a show in front of their mates and they'd love to sort of say, oh, I got off with one of banana rama. Because when you tell them who you actually are, they just sort of I mean, when you say you're not, you know, say, oh, I'm a secretary or something, like, you lie, you're in banana armor. <laughs> Most of them say that they've got off with us anyway. Yeah. So that's the difference. <laughs> it must be really odd imagining that your picture is on, like, teenage boys' bedroom walls and they look up to you and, and all that kind of thing. them. The pictures are so unflattering. <laughs> <laughs> I never really think that they are. I'm I'd be really shocked be. if I saw a bedroom wall with yeah. me on it, I think. The only persons I've seen is my brother's. <laughs> so that's what? different. My brother's uh, <laughs> bedroom wall. Who's got pictures of me up? But then that's just as a proud brother, I suppose. 
It's really strange. I mean, you seem like you're like sort of totally down to earth about it, but I can't believe that it doesn't affect. Well, it's good for your it ego, but you. it just seems so weird that people actually want just your name on a piece of paper. Because I just feel I'm so normal. What's the big deal? I think That's it's a lot to do with um, the people you mix with and the places you go. Because I mean, we've never just because we're in a pop group started mixing with other pop stars or going to string fellows or the places you read they all supposedly mm. go mm. to. I mean, uh, I think that's when you sort of lose touch with, with reality and probably get to believe either you're pressed, though it's lucky we don't believe all of ours. <laughs> <laughs> you know, or you start getting into a character, you know, as opposed to being your real self. And I think it's, it's we would never allow each other to be like that. I mean, if any of either of us <laughs> if any of us started like getting like that, they just wouldn't live it down with the other two. So there's no chance of getting that. It's pop also stylish. the lifestyle. It is definitely our lifestyle because a lot of other people they just choose to surround themselves with yes men and people who tell them they're wonderful all the time, and um, so of course they start thinking that they're better than other people. I mean, I've seen it in other groups, and it's obviously their lifestyle that's led them to get things out of proportion. Who can she mean, I ask myself. <laughs> <laughs> more, <lips> music. <laughs> <laughs> more music. We're going to play Shy Boy and we'll be back for more chat in just a sec. This video we're going to look at is Cheers Then. Now you must tell me about the making of this mm. because there is a particular theme behind all the locations. Yes, this is um, The Sound of Music, one of our favourite films. And it was filmed in Austria in all the same locations and it was about Minus 20 degrees, <laughs> freezing cold, thick with fog. Very um, uncomfortable video. In most video. of it, we're just sort of stripped down to sort of T-shirts and sort of nun's habits. <laughs> <laughs> Slung homemade nun's outfits over the top. It was freezing. I mean, we were just dying every time we had to take our coats off to actually sing. But you can see we're freezing. That's right, one red noses. It's <laughs> a really embarrassing bit at one point because we're going along in the back of a pony and trap and I'm actually sort of soothing, stroking Sarah's arm. Oh, yeah, and it's on video, it's really awful, but it must have been so, so warming, <laughs> sort of subconsciously warming her up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so embarrassed. Every time I see it, I it's just really die. <laughs> well, so tell us about some of the places, because I think, don't you go around the little summer house thing where they do oh, yeah, 16 yeah. going on 17? If it was stuck on the side of a motorway, they'd moved it. It wasn't in the actual location <laughs> no. any longer. And the extra, the oh, boy, boy who was supposed to be the... the Ralph. Ralph, Ralph yeah. yeah. Him, he stank of brandy because it was so cold they'd been playing him with brandy to warm him up. He had to breathe in our faces. Mm -hmm. And we'd never gone for curly blondes anyway. <laughs> <laughs> And did you have to do all the running up and down the hills and yeah, stuff like down. that? Yeah. yeah. It was good, though. It was comedy. really good seeing the places, I think. It's a fabulous place. Mm. Do you cry when you watch The Sound of Music? No. No. no I, last time we saw it was quite recently, wasn't it? In Scotland, yeah. and I laughed. We were arrested when we made the video, do you remember? Oh, yeah. They thought we were smuggling in and out of the Austrian-German border. Because it was done right Because we had border. helicopters and everything. I thought <laughs> we were carrying guns or drugs or something. They had everyone up against the vans, you know. Like that. Gosh, what an exciting life! <laughs> I bet it didn't That's happen to Julie. I bet it didn't happen to Julie <laughs> Andrews. <laughs> right, Julie. Ready? Yeah. Cheers then. <laughs> Welcome back to an hour of banana armor videos. Sitting on the couch, having a oh. quick drink while <laughs> Sumi's talking. <laughs> now you've been together for a number of years now. What have the darkest hours of banana armor been? Being canned off stage in New York. <laughs> It's pretty dismal. Um, we did a PA out there because we were used to doing PAs in London and uh, we thought it was the same in New York, but apparently it's not. And uh, it was advertised as our debut sort of tour, a, a live gig. And we went on and lip synced to um, two or three songs and people started throwing cans at Supporting us. Supporting Steel Pulse at the Ritz. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't know until we got there. Yeah, oh, it was and they booked us as a support act and told us we were just doing a PA like we did at the Camden Palace or whatever. It so was they just were you miming so and they degrading. Didn't like it. The worst thing is that the bloke who who was supposed to be in the records to mime to had a stomach bug or some feeble <laughs> excuse, and so the the <laughs> d DJ only had two twelve inches and he ran them back to back and we didn't know where the vocals came <gasps> in 
or where they weren't. We were sort of caught at the back of the stage. I mean, it was just so bad. There's another real, really fault. low point to our career. <laughs> it happened in Sydney, Australia. <laughs> <laughs> we had a few. Um, we'd just spent two weeks in Japan and we'd worked every single day, all day, after an 18-hour flight. Karen hit Sydney and had a breakdown <laughs> and couldn't leave the hotel. Over dinner. Sarah and I got there to discover that we'd been booked in to a nightclub in Cabramada, which is on the outskirts of Sydney, and it's where, like, it's near the docks and where all the sort of dodgy people live, to be DJs for the night, <laughs> <laughs> along with a PA. And we got on the coach that the record company had organised, because we tried to say no, and they said, oh, you've got to go through with it, you've got to go through with it, we've had it booked for weeks. And we got on the coach, and the coach driver threatened to kick me off. <laughs> Why? If I didn't behave myself, because oh. I, I touched his controls. <laughs> <laughs> so I ran off the coach screaming and crying, and Hilary dragged me back on the coach. We got to the place, and it was the pits. It was just like all 35-year-old couples having a night out who'd never, ever heard of our group before anyway. And we were playing our taste in music, which is fairly obscure by their standards. And... The, the drunks kept leering up to us, play some rock and roll. <laughs> like this, it was just a nightmare. And we couldn't wait to get off stage. Yes. Yeah, they normally happen abroad, the down, down <laughs> yeah. Yeah, You get cool. weary and emotional from travelling. <laughs> oh, fine stories. Right, we'll talk about some more cheerful things in a moment. Yes. But, uh, <laughs> thank you for those. Thank you for those tales of rock and roll madness. Uh, the next thing that we have to play is Na Na Hey Hey Kissing oh, Goodbye. Look out for Sharon Metcalf. <laughs> Sharon Metcalf. Everyone thinks she looks like Sharon Metcalf. No, you think I do. Karen does. Yeah, <laughs> you said it yourself. It was you who said it. it. When she's wearing the you boxing like mask, argument. <laughs> argument. All right, order, order. Let's have a look. We'll make up our own minds. Um, <laughs> the one in the corner when she's Boy got the George mask Marilyn on. And Howard Jones. <laughs> I'm sure. Now, from one of your cover versions, we're going to uh, play something that's an original composition. Oh, yes. Cruel Summer was your first American mm -hmm. hit, wasn't it? Yeah, mm -hmm. top ten. And James last covered it. <laughs> was that a special thrill? <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you? Where are Banana Rama the most popular though? Because you have kind of like big followings in France, and which is quite well, unusual yeah. for an English. Summer group, was it? really big all over the world, really, a bit like Venus now. But um, I don't know. We've had a few hits in Germany, and just that one hit in America mm. until Venus, which is climbing there steadily at the moment. What we've got is like um, sort of a base following all over the place. Who are members of the fan club and they write regularly and all that sort of thing. But um, as, as for being huge in any country, I think this is the record that really seems to be. Because it's happening everywhere at once. What about Japan? Because mm. they're really mad on very image-conscious bands, aren't they're they? Manic. They're big over there. <laughs> well, they go mad for us, but I don't think we've had a hit out there. We're top of the dance charts with yeah, Venus. Yeah, Venus. It's yeah. a strange market, though, because most of the, the stuff in the charts is Japanese. You know, and there's very few international acts. Although they're in all the sort of glossy magazines you get, they're actually... Not in the charts. N not in the charts, you know, it's mm. just that sort of following who follow European music or American music who would lead you to believe that. And because they go so hysterical, everyone comes back from Japan sort of saying, hey, we're really, really popular in Japan. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and they probably haven't sold a record, you know, it's just that the girls, I mean, the girls go wild over us. Yeah. I mean, you get the boys crying in their, and they're in their 20s, you know. <laughs> really um, strange audience. Excuse me. <laughs> How, how did you write Cruel Summer? Was it one person's idea? I mean, I don't know how you, how you write yeah, songs um, collectively. Does one person do lyrics and one person do melody? No, it varies, really. Yeah. This one we had um, a backing track, and then we wrote the lyrics and the melody over the top ourselves. And did you do the video in America? I mean, yeah, it looks in New like York. It. We were determined to get to New York by hook or by crook, so we decided that the video should be shot in New York. And they managed to fly us out there for the day <laughs> and film it and... Um, Bring it in for ten thousand pounds. <laughs> Did you bump your head on purpose? That's what I want to know. No, no, I'd never do anything so tacky on purpose. <laughs> it's a nice moment, though. <laughs> yes, she there's said some cruel. great bits of acting in there. But, <laughs> yeah. So Did anyone spot the V sign in. in the truck, though? That's what we want to know. <laughs> no, but they all will now. Look out for the V sign in the truck. <laughs> okay. Have you ever had singing or dancing lessons? We yes. had um, singing lessons, about two, two with <laughs> Tony Debrett, the same woman that taught Johnny Rotten. 
but um, it's just so pompous and you have to sing like an opera singer and the three of us were standing there together and it's, we yeah. were too inhibited, it's just too you've embarrassing. You've got to do all this sort of breathing, ha, 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 and it's just like, and she comes around and holds you in, sort of, and she's mm. got this mega voice, I mean, she sort of sings and it's like deafening, totally deafening. Basically, it's just learning how to breathe, and yeah. um, it's no good going for a lesson unless you're prepared to practice at home, and I'm damned if I'm doing that <laughs> at home. So. It tends to change your voice, I think. I mean, it does help with breathing, if, you know, I suppose, if you learn how to... It's basically just topping. They teach you how to sort of keep a lung full of air in, but um, I don't think any of us want to actually end up singing like sort of operatic singers or anything. But can, but can you sing untrained? I mean, in a concert situation or whatever, successfully. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see soon <laughs> enough. I was sorting through my stuff because my mum's moving, moving house and I found all my medals and certificates from singing as a young child. Oh, I'm already Stop. a seasoned performer on stage. Yes, yeah, but if when, the crochet when you're a little classes. kid and you're singing and if you go, <gasps> then it's quite sweet, but you can't afford to do that when you're a pop singer, can no, you? I suppose well, not. I'm sure most of the people in the charts haven't been trained to sing. No, it's a different Very style few. of singing. But wouldn't you have to go out and play live? I mean, lots of people, I mean, even people who are thought of as, like, really good pop singers, like Annie Lennox and Paul Young, end up yeah. in all sorts of trouble, don't they? Yeah, people's voices go, but, I mean, it's a tender... I mean, your voice gets stronger as you, as you practice, because we've done rehearsals with a view to touring on many <laughs> occasions, <laughs> and we've done, like, a few weeks or a month's rehearsal, and by the end of it, you can breathe really easily and sing really easily, just because it, it's, like, it's like keeping fit. You've got to keep your voice fit. When you haven't sung for ages, it just takes a while for it to warm up, you know. Now, I know you are going to start doing serious touring. Mm -hmm. Do you keep fit? I um, mean, because if you're running about on stage every night, I mean, most people do we, have we to. Do we only dance. do dancing. We don't actually go to aerobics classes or anything. We did start that years ago, but it's so boring. It's horrible Gosh. anyway. It really is. I mean, we started doing actual proper dance training quite recently, well, last year, when we were planning on touring last year. what does that mean? Does that, does that mean doing exercises, or do you have to like stand at a bar like no, ballet dancers? No, we just dance yeah, so work out routines, routines, really, for the... the... Sorry? <laughs> Why don't you do the interview on your own? OK. <laughs> don't be cruel. Don't be cruel. Oh, they're all dissolving into giggles over here. Shall we move swiftly on to uh, Robert De Niro, I think, is the next thing that we have to look at. And uh, why don't you compose yourself, Siobhan? Yes. And then we'll have a nice little chat after Robert De Niro. Thank you and good night. Before the break, you saw Banana Armour with Robert De Niro's way. Now, we're all terribly composed, so I can ask you a sensible question. You, you got to meet him, didn't you, as a result of that song? Yes, our press officer arranged it with his press officer, and uh, he phoned us up at our flat and asked us out for a drink. None of us actually believed it was him on the phone because <laughs> my boyfriend answered the phone and he came and said, it's Robert De Niro he wants to talk to one of you. <laughs> we didn't believe him. Oh it was about 10 minutes before we got to the phone. And he was on his knees, please, I swear, he said his name's Bob De Niro. Please <laughs> take this phone off me. And we're going, go away, don't be stupid, we're watching the telly. And in the end, I, I had to take the phone call because the other two were thrashing around the hall and punching each other oh and screaming. God. What did you do? Did you giggle? Did you faint? Yes. Were you composed? I spent the whole time with that hand over the mouthpiece going, oh, yes. <laughs> And Siobhan got stuck with the director when we actually met him. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, girls. Was, was, he, was he nice? Was he wonderful? He's terribly, he's supposed to be with this terribly really. intense method. No, no, he wasn't, wasn't intense at all. He was just going for a drink with him. Obviously, loosened Boy, his tongue. Boy, did we have a drink with him? Listen, we're going to play Rough Justice next, which was a much tougher song than people expect yeah. from mm. Banana Armour. I mean, do you get fed up with the Banana Armour image? Would you like to be the style council or something sometime? Well, at that stage in our career, yes, we did. I mean, we were sick of just being mis. Well, people wanted to think we were stupid, and they wanted to think we were just three stupid blondes. No offence. <laughs> um, and um, there's a lot more to us than that. And so we released tracks of the album, i.e. Rough Justice and Hotline to Heaven, which had a much gloomier meaning than people would expect from our type of group. And um, we got our comeuppance. They didn't chart. <laughs> they weren't played on the radio. <laughs> and so we won't release tracks like that as singles anymore because what's the point, you know? I mean, if the radio aren't, aren't prepared to play them. But if you buy our albums, you'll see there's a lot more to us than just Venus or Robert De Niro's waiting. I think we were fighting a lot against the image that the press had given us 
uh, at, at that point, at the point of the last album. And um, since then, we've got over all that and we sort of, I mean, we just are a pop group. And yes, we are serious sometimes and other times we're not. And people just have to accept you the way they are. I mean, we're proud of the songs we put out, whether it's Venus or whether it's Rough Justice. You know, they're all good records. So. <laughs> <gasps> what she said, it's just as well you couldn't hear that. Uh, right, let's just have a look at Rough Justice back in a minute. Now what I want to know is why is Siobhan always the different one? What do you mean? <laughs> well, when you, when you all had the famous banana armour hairdos and everything, you were the first one to have it cut short so you look different. It just seems that often in photographs and things that you well, have... I started off with a crop when we were with the Funboy 3. My hair was cropped about that long. Oh, that's true. I just thought it just seemed that something right. like when, when you... Is there not a thing when you sort of work out costumes or whatever together? It often seems that you're just sort of apart. Well, Sarah and Karen have known each other since they were 12 or 13. Well, it's got nothing to do with cutting your hair short. <laughs> no. But they're, they're like completely twins and they're always no, no. I think they are. I don't think we are. Anyway. I think me, me and Siobhan both change our hair a lot. I mean, yeah. since the group started, I mean, Sarah's got sort of long blonde hair mm. and mine's been blonde, red, black, short and long, you know, in between. And so Siobhan changed a lot hairstyle-wise, but clothes-wise. We tend to plan on colours, yeah. which normally tend to be black, white or we denim. We didn't stop planning <laughs> that, actually. Because we, turn up and we all wear the same colours. It's a funny number to work with, isn't it? Three, because, I mean, in a duo, things are sort of evenly weighted and stuff. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, do you not divide into two onto one when you have disagreements and things well, we like that? we don't usually have disagreements, fortunately. If there are, it's between me and Siobhan. Yeah. I'm the sort of um, go-between, really, yeah. because I'm not as stubborn. If I was, we'd never get anything done. I'm sort of mediator <laughs> between the two stubborn pigs over here. <laughs> <laughs> I sort of even things out. But fortunately, we've got dead similar tastes in just about anything you care to mention. Yeah, we so. hardly ever disagree anymore. Mm -hmm. I mean, the only disagreements we, we sort of had came about when we were literally sort of living together, working together, and trivial things carried over to work and it just was a lot of bit of sulking and that. But there's virtually no disagreements now. Do you think you'll right? always be partners? <coughs> always be friends? I, sh yeah. I, I think we'll always be friends, yeah. I mean obviously we're not going to be Banana Rama when we're 60, you know. Perish yeah. the thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I mean it's a social thing as well as a business thing with us and always has been. I mean when we when we go out at night, we go out with each other as friends socially and with the same group of people. So it's not like we've just come together, we work together and then all go home to different places. We live n next door to each other virtually, so it's, it's just that sort of... It's, that's what's kept us together and it's grown stronger, if anything, through being in the group, through going around the world together and suffering <laughs> breakdowns or whatever. <laughs> Oh, don't! I had a tear in my eye while I was listening to that. Um, listen, we're about to go on to... Well, might not for you, dear. We're about to go on to Venus. Now, I remember the original of this, but I gather you don't. Um, no, well, before do. my time, but not before Siobhan's. <laughs> Ooh! Oh, but of course, Siobhan's 29, we were discussing this earlier <laughs> on. Though. Please. <laughs> you do remember the original, do you? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah I do. And that's when I first started listening to the radio, was that year. But if and you don't remember it, how did you come to, uh, to do a version of it? Well, I suggested, things when we first got together, I, I, I suggested that we start rehearsing it. And it always sounded brilliant whenever we rehearsed it. Well, we tried loads of things out, some of which sounded crap, you know. <laughs> it's just one of those songs that's always suited, suited our voices and worked very well for us. But I do, I do sort of remember it from that year. I have to confess. <laughs> <laughs> Although I didn't buy it. I never had enough pocket money at the time. Oh, that's right. <laughs> I've already confessed. <laughs> I remember it too. <laughs> <from> what I've <laughs> read. <laughs> All right, let's look at it. It's Venus. Gosh, this time seems to have run out awfully quickly, but we only have one more video to squeeze in, which is the next single, mm. More Than Physical. Anything to tell us about this? Um, <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's the other Waterman Stock and Aitken track on the album. I mean, after we finished 15 songs with Jolly and Swain, we, we then... Um, found out that they were free and we'd been asking to work with them for months because we really loved the Dead or Alive single and um, 
We wanted to make a couple of dance records, and Jolly Swain are, are great writers, they're great arrangers, but they're not dance producers, so we went in and did Venus with them, and then we tried writing a song with them, and this is the result. What are their names? Who are we talking about? Waterman, Waterman Stock, Stock and Aiken. Aiken. Oh, it's right. quite a mouthful. Now, I had a list down of things to say, and of course, you know, you're doing the new single, your album, True Confessions, is out now, and there's a tour coming up, but there isn't a tour coming up anymore, is there? No. There was until today. Oh, gosh, hot news. <laughs> <laughs> no. Fresh um, off the presses. <laughs> uh, I don't know how to put this. Oh, come on, <laughs> fess up, Karen. OK, I'm pregnant. <laughs> About four months, four months gone, four months up this spout. <laughs> and, um, Congratulations. Although I was willing to, to get up on that stage and give it all I had, um, it's only today I've allowed myself to be persuaded that maybe it's not such a good idea after all. You really would have done it? Yeah, I mean, I'm fine about it. I mean, you know, we've been dancing and things and I feel all right. I think everyone's a bit worried about the appearance though. Because although I'm not too round yet, in a month's time you never know. Yeah. So. It's just that they, in order to get it together before Karen gets too pregnant, <laughs> we'd have to do it like really shoddily and quickly without enough rehearsals and things like that, and it, it's just not worth it. I mean, basically, basically I feel more I've comfortable. Up the whole <laughs> 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 what are the plans for the year? But how is I'm this feeling very guilty. Is it? How is it going to affect your plans for after the year? I mean, you're going to go straight back to work. Yeah. You're going to do the tour. Oh yeah, yeah. as soon as it's out. <laughs> as soon as Babs is out, <laughs> we'll be off on the road. With the lad. Yes, yeah. it'll, be, it'll be something to amuse us while we're on the road. <laughs> oh, it sounds wonderful. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. Having Who's your mum? Banana Rama! <laughs> <laughs> Imagine it. Well, have great fun on the road with um, Babs. With Babs. 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 With Babs. <laughs> or Junior, or whoever he may be. Thanks very much for coming in. Thank, Thank you. And, uh, Bonne naissance. Thank you.